How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru. We are back with another CPU cooler review. Today we are looking at version 2 of the inexpensive ML240L series from Cooler Master. This is currently available to pre-order from Overclockers UK for around about £70. There is also the smaller single fan 120mm version and that's around about the £60 mark. So what's new in the V2? Well it's equipped with Cooler Master's third generation pump design so that means it has a increased chamber capacity and improved flow rate due to a, a redesigned impeller. It also is equipped with a tri-phase motor with silent driver so it should have a lower noise, a lower operating noise compared to previous versions. Other improvements include an updated radiator which has a longer fin length and it also has wider water channels so this should help with the heat dissipation and lower the airflow resistance. The V2 is also equipped with Cooler Master's new Sickle Flow 120 fans. They have an improved structural stability compared to the previous master fan and they have a PWM speed range of 650 to 1800 RPM and a maximum flow rate of 62 cubic feet per minute. So now that we've got some of the technical information out of the way let's have a look and see what Cooler Master has included inside the box. As you can see the packaging follows the traditional black and purple theme of Cooler Master products. On the front you've got a nice big image of the cooler, some Cooler Master logos and a reference to the RGB lighting support. Around the back you have some kind of key features listed in various different languages and on one side there is a full specification list and then you've got some smaller images with some key details listed on the other side. So inside the packaging there's a little bit of protective foam on the top and then everything's kind of been sorted out into this cardboard crate to give it a little bit of extra protection during shipping. There's a user guide and a warranty information card and then there's the two sickle flow 120 fans. These have a seven blade, quite large blades and there's seven blades on this. These are kind of a, a white opaque finish to them so you can imagine the RGB illumination will shine through those pretty well. So around the edges of the sickle flow 120 fans they have this reinforcing near the screw holes to stop any any possible frame deforming while you're screwing the, uh, the fans onto the radiator which is nice to see and obviously round the on the four corners where you screw these into position there's rubberized anti-vibration pads one other thing I forgot to mention they have a four pin PWM power connection and a standard four pin RGB connection as well so there should be no need for any additional fan controllers or RGB controllers to be able to get these connected up to your motherboard and have the RGB up and running no problem. So we also have a large bag of pieces in here. There's various mounting hardware for Intel platforms and some brackets for AMD installation. A bag full of fan screws more standoffs and thumb screws for Intel. There's a, a small RGB controller with pretty standard looking three button configuration. There's an Intel backplate and upper retention brackets. Some kind of power adapter, a Molex power adapter for the RGB controller. There's a, th a three way RGB splitter cable and a two way fan splitter cable. There's also three of these these plastic clips. Now these, I really quite like these clips and you don't often see these even with more expensive coolers. These are for the RGB splitter cable so you connect your RGB cables together then push one of these uh, plastic clips over the connection and this holds them in position and you can't pull them apart. It's really good. I really, really like these and I wish that 
these were included with more RGB products. And then last but not least, we have the cooler itself. So the first thing that you notice when you take the radiator out of the, uh, out of the packaging is the, the black coating that's been applied. It's got kind of a, a textured finish to it and it gives it much more of a premium look compared to the usual kind of smooth finish you get on a lot of the other radiators. There's also a Cooler Master logo that's kind of embossed into the, to the finish on both sides. The tubing at the radiator side is fixed in position so there's no rotation there. There's braided sleeving which is pretty common even on the, uh, the more inexpensive coolers these days but it is still nice to see. And then down at the pump or the CPU block side you've got two 90 degree rotating fittings to help you maneuver it into position when you're installing it into the system. So the base of the cooler comes with a protective layer on it and then remove that layer you can see that this is a copper thermal transfer plate and it's got quite a, a smooth and flat feeling even surface. The machining marks are not really deep at all so that feels like a nice good quality piece of copper. And the cables coming from the pump there is a three pin power cable and then a four pin uh, RGB cable and that lights up this Cooler Master halo on top of the pump. So that is pretty much everything that is included with the cooler. There are quite a few bits and bobs so let's have a look now and see how we install the cooler on our Intel test bench. So we've got everything we need laid out on the desk to install the cooler on our Intel test bench and the first step I like to do is to install the fans to the radiator so just pop the fans in position depending whether you want them in like a push or a pull configuration and then just use these eight long screws and these hold the fan in place on the radiator. These have a kind of a thumb screw head so you can tighten them up so far with your fingers but then obviously to get them fully tightened up you might just want to nip them up with a Phillips screwdriver and then do the same obviously for the rest of the screws. So the next step before fitting the cooler into the system <coughs> is to remove the protective film from the base of the cooler and then we need to take the Intel mounting brackets, the upper mounting brackets and then locate these with the notch on the pump housing. There's a small notch in the plastic and that lines up with the notch on the bracket. So pop that in position. Just hold it in place while you install the screws and they install from the underside. Just pop the screws in position, tighten them up. There's obviously two screws for each bracket. So they're both nice and tight now. So that's one of the brackets installed. Then obviously just do the same for the other side of the CPU block. So now we have the radiator prepared and the CPU block with both of its brackets on. We now need to install the Intel bracket to the underside of the motherboard. If you want, you can remove this self-adhesive backing and that'll help hold the bracket in position. But we just need to line this up with the holes on the motherboard. You can see the thread sticking out now. And then just screw in the four Intel standoffs in position. But tightening these in place by hand should be enough to hold them tight enough but you can always nip them up with a pair of pliers but just be very careful and don't over tighten them because you could potentially damage the thread. So there's no thermal compound pre-applied to the base of the cooler so next we just need to apply some thermal compound in your preferred method. I'm using the P-Sides blob method and then we just need to lower the CPU block into position lined up with the holes on the mounting bracket 
and then install the four retaining thumb screws. So you just want to tighten those up lightly to begin with just to get them in position and then you want to tighten them up in an X-shaped pattern to kind of spread the pressure over the CPU evenly to spread the compound. And again you can just do your final tightening with a Phillips screwdriver just to get them nicely nipped up. And that's pretty much it for the hardware. So now all we need to do is connect up all the wiring. So first of all we'll connect up the three pin pump power cable to the CPU option header on the motherboard. And then we need to connect the two fan power cables to the provided four pin PWM splitter cable and then connect the other end of the splitter cable up to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And then we can use the RGB splitter cable to connect both the RGB fan connections. And this is the part where you use the Cooler Master clips. You just plug those together and then clip that in position and then that stops the RGB connections coming apart. So we do that for both the fans. Again, connect it together. Put a clip in place and we also connect the RGB cable for the pump as well and put a clip on that one. It's all nicely clipped together now, they're not coming apart easily. So then you've actually got two options of what you want to do with the other end of the RGB splitter cable. If you have a motherboard like ours that has a four pin RGB connection, you can connect it directly to that. So if your motherboard doesn't have any RGB or four pin RGB connections, Cooler Master has provided this little uh, RGB controller and a little adapter. You just plug the adapter into the controller and then plug the RGB cable, the RGB splitter cable into the adapter, just like so. And then the other side, there's a Molex power connector that you plug into the adapter, uh, to the RGB controller and then into a spare Molex connector from your power supply. So that's the installation procedure covered. It's quite a simple and straightforward process and it should only probably take around about 15 to 20 minutes maximum. So we've got the V2 installed into our Intel test bench now. Everything's up and running and working as it should do. Currently we are using the motherboard, the Gigabyte RGB Fusion software to control the RGB lighting and that allows you to synchronize the cooler with other components in the system. If your motherboard isn't an RGB compatible motherboard, you can obviously use the included Cooler Master RGB controller. So now we know how to install it, we know a bit of information about the cooler and its features. Let's now run some IDA64 stress tests and see what the thermal performance is like. So with the Intel Core i9-9900K CPU in our test bench set to an all-core frequency of 3.6 GHz, the ML240L V2 records an average temperature delta of 30.9 degrees C. So used in conjunction with maybe a low power CPU, the ML240L V2 should do an acceptable job of keeping CPU temperature under control. When we crank the frequency and voltage of the Core i9-9900K up to 4.7 GHz and 1.2 volts, the thermal performance of the ML240L V2 starts to decline a little, but thermal performance is still within a similar range to previous Cooler Master AOs that we have tested in the past, so it's not a great surprise. And during our extreme overclocking test with the i9-9900K configured with an all-core frequency of 4.9 GHz, thermal performance of the V2 remains pretty consistent. However, it is slightly below par of what we would expect from a 240mm all-in-one cooler and it is a little bit disappointing. So previous Cooler Master AO coolers we have tested in the past, they've always scored well in our noise level tests and it is much of the same story again with the ML240L V2. Since the V2 is using a relatively high speed fan at 1800 RPM, 
these noise levels are quite impressive and would probably suit someone looking for a CPU cooler with low noise output. So overall the Cooler Master ML240L V2 it's not a bad little CPU cooler. We do like some of the premium features such as this textured finish to the radiator, obviously the braided sleeving and the RGB lighting is quite a big improvement compared to previous Cooler Master all-in-one coolers that we've had a look at before. But we can't help but feeling a little bit let down by the thermal performance, especially considering that there has been so many different changes and upgrades in the V2. We're still seeing similar kind of performance to previous Cooler Master all-in-ones, which is, like I say, a little bit disappointing. However, if you are building a system that is focused more on low noise levels and using the ML240L V2 with, say, a lower-powered CPU and in with the fans in a PWM configuration, you will probably be more than happy with the noise levels and probably performance should be acceptable. If you are striving for absolute raw thermal performance, then maybe the V2, it might not be for you. So if you've enjoyed watching our review of the Cooler Master ML240L V2 RGB, then give us a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to receive notifications. There's also a full in-depth written review of this CPU cooler over on the KitGuru website. So head over there, check that out. And you can also go to our Facebook page where you can discuss what you think of this CPU cooler or other components that we have uh, reviewed in the past. I've been James for KitGuru. Thank you for watching.